Hi, my name is Steve Houston, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, you know all about this channel. And uh, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, maybe you just stumbled on me by searching certain IMOs, names out there, what have you. Welcome to my channel. This is where we discuss all things related to financial services, their products, the compensation plans, the IMOs, the IMO comparisons between other IMOs, and there's a a lot of differences out there and some you need to know about before you sign. If you haven't watched that video yet and you're contemplating getting in this industry, go watch Know Before You Sign video. I think it'll be enlightening for you uh, before you put your name on that dotted line and then you can't get out of that contract, right? And the standard on this channel is I supply the documentation that backs up my claims and then you decide what's best for you. Not me, not the recruiter, no one. You decide based on facts and knowing about this market and this industry before you sign the dotted line. This week I'm going to be talking about uh, a question I get all the time. I did answer it uh, on a different video, but this is going to be a shotgun approach because it seems to be a confusing issue. Many agents are confused as to what we sell here in the mortgage section industry, right? Many confuse it with the type of mortgage section that is required by the bank or a product called MPI, which is Mortgage Protection Insurance. I have another video that kind of goes through these descriptions at length. Go take a look at that. It'll be up here uh, in the corner here. Just go ahead and click on that when you get done with this video. Uh, it may very well be on the end card as well, but go look for it. You'll find it, right? So let's get into it. Let's deal with the different types that people think of when they're thinking of mortgage protection and the actual differences between the two. So hopefully it'll make sense to you and clear up any confusion. The first one is PMI. Now PMI protects the lender, right? Not you or the homeowner, right? Against the risk that you will default on your mortgage. Conventional financing requires PMI when the loan to value ratio or LTV is over 80% of the appraised value. Looks kind of like this, very simple. PMI does nothing but protect the bank. So when you get that question, when you're down that lead and they say, hey, I've already got that, I got it through my bank, that's what they're talking about. It's default insurance, it does nothing for the family in the event that one of the two in that household needs two incomes to make that mortgage payment. In the event that one of them passes away, guess what? Now they don't come home and neither is their paycheck. That home is at risk. This insurance helps only the bank. You're gonna lose the home anyway because chances are most people, if they lose one income and it's requiring two to make that mortgage payment, that health is at risk and falls into short sale or foreclosure. So again, bank only, PMI is just to protect the bank, right? On the MPI question, it's a little more complicated because this is what's really close to what we currently sell or we sell against in our industry. Mortgage protection insurance is more of an optional product like ours is. It makes loan payments when an unusual event might prevent normal payments being made. A policy, mortgage protection policy, right, MPI, mortgage protection insurance, is typically intended to pay off the mortgage if the insurer dies. Sounds familiar, right? But there are some things that make this thing really, really bad. It might also be used to protect against disability uh, or unemployment, either of which could cause hardship or financial distress. Now, this type of coverage is similar, similar to what we offer, but the deal breaker is, is decreasing coverage and level premium that makes this stuff junk, right? It's decreasing coverage designed, well, it's kind of a head fake. It's, it looks good, but it really isn't. Let me show you. Now, the life insurance component of mortgage tax insurance, like the mortgage balance, declines over time, right? Which is why it's called decreasing term. Now, Money Magazine did a scathing article about this type of coverage years ago, and they both, they ripped it to shreds saying it was a big scam. Now, they went a little bit overboard, but they tend to want to sell magazines, so they make it a bigger deal. However, it is a horrible product, right? It's just plain junk, and it's easy to replace. This is also what you and I in the mortgage protection industry are trying to sell against because what we have is a much better value. So it's a very easy replacement. Let's talk about this, right? So here it is. I'm gonna tell you just how I do it in a home. So Jack and Jill, when you took out the mortgage of $246,000, I have 250 on my board, but it's close enough, 
right? If they had asked you if you wanted mortgage protection insurance and you'd have said yes, the first month you'd have had $246,000 of coverage. But you see, every month you make the mortgage payment, your mortgage goes down, right? And, but so does your coverage, right? So say at the end of the mortgage, you, have, you only owe $2,000 and someone in the home dies, the mortgage would be paid off with this $2,000 worth of coverage, right? That's your insurance coverage. But what if someone dies and left the other spouse, right, the surviving beneficiary, with bills, medical bills, or auxiliary debt, that that debt could break you? Doesn't matter. The bank gets a check for $2,000 and no other monies are going to be paid out. Now, as I said about 15 years ago, Money Magazine did an article about this, talking about how horrible this is. But the gist of what they were saying was that they're charging the same premium for $246,000, in my case, two fifty, dollars as they were at the end of your mortgage for $2,000 worth of coverage. And here's why I don't like it. If you alter the mortgage in any way, you lose the coverage and you can't get it back again. You would have to apply for new coverage and the premium is going to be higher as you're now older and potentially have medical issues and you may even be uninsurable. So a huge risk for most people. I see no time when you would run to recommend this type of coverage, right? I'm in full agreement with Money Magazine. I don't like that either, but that's not why I don't like it. The reason why I don't like it is that any time you alter the mortgage, move or refinance, you alter the coverage. Let's say you want to add onto your home. Maybe you want to put a new driveway in, or you want to remodel the house, or you want to add a garage, or whatever, repave the driveway. It doesn't matter and you can afford to do it, but by refinancing the home to pay for those things, you've now altered the mortgage, right? And now you lose the coverage and you can't get it back again. You now have to, again, apply for new coverage and the premiums will be higher as you now are older. And again, like I said, you could possibly be uninsurable. So I hope that makes sense. This is what you and I are selling against, MPI, not PMI, which is default insurance, right? So. What is it we sell called mortgage protection? Mortgage protection really, in its simplest form, is a simplified issue level term insurance plan that is designed and marketed to pay off the mortgage loan in the event of death. Very simple, right? The difference between mortgage protection and term life insurance really is in the underwriting. It's much easier to qualify for mortgage protection because there's no physical exam to pass if you're doing it correctly, especially if you work in the lead program because all the direct mail about mortgage protection states right on the piece of paper, no exam. That's the hook, that's why people are applying, and that's what you should be selling. It's in their best interest, especially if they're over 40 years old. They're going to find a reason to either decline or rate that client. And if you go down the fully underwritten route, which is a blood work, blood exam, medical exam, send the nurse out, stick in the arm of the needle, it goes on the MIB, and now every insurance company will see that and follow lockstep with everybody else, right? So in this market, mortgage section, it's very common to see people with health challenges that would disqualify them from fully underwritten products. So be careful going out to their home and putting them in a fully underwritten product when they actually responded to a no exam mail piece because even if they don't tell you, there probably is a reason why the no exam made their interest. Because what happens is even if you get them qualified, it would make their policies much more expensive in the long run due to those ratings, those table ratings or tables, because they're not gonna get standard rate. They could be table A, B, C, or D because of health concerns, because you had that blood work checked. So be very, very careful. The easiest way to understand this is this. The vehicle that we use to provide funds to, to the surviving beneficiary is a level term insurance policy with no exam required. You will want to do the majority of your business with non-medical products. Now, let's talk about typical age groups for different products, right? The age for more, I can tell you that the average person, age of the person filling out the direct mail piece, it's age 55, right? But here's the deal. The age for mortgage protection product varies really from company to company, insurance company to insurance company. But typically 18 to maybe 65 or 70, mortgage protection is a good way to go for that particular client. If they are over 80 to 85, then I'd be looking at final expense, right? Now, insurance underwriters always use tables for fully underwritten policies. 
Table one, standard rate. Table two, and on and on and on, right? The rate goes up. So what happens is, is that, I'm going to use this example, you have tables, table A, let's assume that's standard rate, right? Now you have B, C, D, and then beyond that, you're looking at decline. We'll call that decline, right? So now, if they go table, if they get rated at table B, now this all happens because you had the blood work done, right? Table C, table D, you can go now probably another 25% higher, 50% higher, and 100% higher, right? This is up to 400% higher, and they're, they're out, they're declined, right? So that's kind of how it works. So, they, so as they get rated, the price goes higher, right? With mortgage protection insurance, the rates are standard issue through all four tables. After that, you're facing, you've got your client facing a decline. So again, be careful, understand this industry really is all about no exam or simplified issue plus. If declined, these cases, you can still write a final expense policy using the critical period concept, and I have a video on this channel that covers how to explain that in the home. It'll be right up here, right? So in wrapping this up, the mortgage protection insurance concept is very easy to understand. Having mortgage protection protects the most valuable asset. Most people think it's the home. Well, guess what? It's not the home. It's your ability to earn income, right? The average mortgage in America, $213,000. Average American family is over $15,000 in credit card debt. The average student loan is over $32,000. All in all, the average American was over $250,000 in debt, right? The amount of life insurance owed is less than 100 grand. 33% of the American adults have zero life insurance. Zero, right? So here's some more facts for you. Many Americans rely solely on coverage provided by their employer, leaving them extremely vulnerable should they lose their job. Very, very easy to have that conversation with a prospect if they say, I have insurance at work. You need to have insurance that you own, not your employer. Here's another fact. 48% of all foreclosures were caused by a disabling injury or a critical illness. Almost 50%, one out of two foreclosures, staggering those numbers, right? Share these numbers with your prospect or your client. The reason these numbers from LIMRA 2017 are important is simple. To have a good business or business model, there has to be a market for what you're doing, right? The questions you have to ask yourself as I close this video up, if you're considering getting this industry, is this, right? Is there a market for what we're doing? And the answer is, I don't think there's any question. Knowing these numbers, I think you can see how valuable our agents are and how valuable these products are to the families that you'll be seeing. Okay, before I wrap this up, remember, the product that we sell is a term insurance product with no exam, it's level premium. So whether they go a 15, 20, or 30 year term, because it's gonna term out, that's why it's called term insurance. Whole life would be insurance for your whole life. Term insurance is ter insurance for a period of time, a term, right? So whether it be 15, 20, or 30 years, what you and I will sell them is a term insurance product, right? No medical exam, simplified issue, right? It's, our premium is level, guaranteed never to increase the entire time of that term, whatever that term is. It's also level coverage, guaranteed never to decrease through the entire term, right? And if you become disabled and you're disabled for longer than six months, the insurance company will pick up the payments and make them to age 95 or for the next 30 years, right? Now, and before I leave you today, I want to talk about this thing right down here. It says two months, right? What you want to do when you're in that home is explain to them that it's level premium, level coverage for the entire term, right? Now, Mr. and Mrs. Jack and Jill, <laughs> right? Let me ask you a question. In 30 years, the insurance company is going to call you on the phone and say, hey, do you, want to, do you wish to extend the coverage? The first question you're going to ask Jack and Jill is what? How much is it? It's a thousand bucks a month. What's the next thing you're going to say, Jack and Jill? You're going to say, I don't want it. I don't need it. Forget it. Cancel it. I'm done. And that's great. You're happy because you didn't die, and we're happy because you didn't write a check, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfect re relationship, okay? However, what happens if, let's say two months 
before that policy turns out, you come down with a terminal illness, you have six months to live. Now, is it worth you putting four payments on a credit card at $1,000 a month to make sure Jill here gets the $250,000? You bet it is. So you wanna make sure that you have a policy that you can extend if it's in your best interest, not the insurance company. That's my tip of the day. Remember, the best way to succeed in this business or in any endeavor you take on, determined not to fail. Have a great week. We'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Grateful that you're here. Hey, don't forget, do me a favor, mash that, hit that bell down there with your mouse, your finger, whatever it takes, and you'll get instant notifications of these videos as they come out. Live streams too. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done that, right? Do me a favor, hit, hit the like button. Helps get the video ranked out there. Pe more people get to see it is what it means. And make some comments. I wanna hear more from you. I appreciate all the calls and emails I get throughout the course of the week. We're developing a great community here. I'm glad that you're getting value out of it. Thank you for the encouraging words. Makes me excited to come back in here and do this. Look, I enjoy doing this because I hear from you. I appreciate that. Have a great week. Bye-bye.